Hello. If you're new, welcome to my channel. If you're returning, welcome back. After my previous video, the top metal album covers of 2022, I sat down and started brainstorming ideas for the next, aka this, video. I started pulling on threads and my ideas went off into many different directions, some of which will be in future videos. That's a bit like it is with art history. It really boils down to pulling on threads and then jumping down rabbit holes to find answers. With my previous video, I was left with a lot of threads that could be pulled, so I decided to pull on the one regarding the cover art for Blind Guardians of the God Machine. With this cover, I had assumed that it was a piece commissioned directly for the album. Scratching below the surface, however, revealed that this work was created at least a decade before the album was even an idea in the heads of Blind Guardian. This work, entitled Gadriel, Angel of War, was created as part of Peter Moorbacher's Angelarium series of illustrations. These illustrations were of, quote-unquote, real angels. Gadriel is mentioned as one of the five Satans in the Book of Enoch. He was the one who taught humans the way of war, as well as the one who tempted Eve to eat of the Tree of Knowledge. Some have even gone so far as to label Gadriel as one of the names of the big bad Lucifer himself. I haven't studied it that far, so I can't vouch for that nugget of information, but it shows this thread still needs pulling. I would have never known any of this had I not pulled on one of the hanging threads already. As an aside, my initial reading of the image seemed to be on the right track. You know what they say about stopped clocks. Well, let's look at a couple more angels in the Angelarium. Okay, after taking all that information down, I decided to pull on another thread. This time I started exploring some albums that used old, for lack of a better term, art on their covers. I already knew of at least one. Cryptopsy's None So Vile features Herodias with the head of John the Baptist by Elisabetta Serrani. Some of the results really surprised me, such as the cover of Morbid Angel's album, Blessed Are the Sick. Here we have the 1895 painting, The Treasures of Satan by Jean Delville. Here are some other notable examples I found. One interesting note about None So Vile. I can't tell which version of the painting is correct and which one is flipped horizontally. I wonder if it has anything to do with the company trying to sell rights to digital reproductions of the original painting. This is just an odd curiosity should you ever find yourself searching for this painting online. When it comes right down to it, the study of art and art history involves jumping down rabbit holes. The artist will jump down rabbit holes to find inspiration or to also shore up the intellectual basis for the work being made. Art historians will jump down rabbit holes in an attempt to uncover clues regarding various works of art. This work is known simply as the Wilton Diptych. The title of the piece refers to the Wilton House, where the Earls of Pembroke resided. The diptych was kept in this estate for around two centuries. The name of the artist who created the painting, unfortunately, is lost to history. This work, which is dated at the very earliest to 1395, more on that later, is a two-panel hinged altarpiece. Let's look at the back first. 
On the left is the coat of arms of Richard II, along with the impaled and vented coat of arms of Edward the Confessor. This may be a little hard to see, as this side of the panel seems to have suffered some aging over the 600 plus years of its existence. On the right side is a large white stag. This stag is on a field of flowers and rosemary. Now let's look at the front. On the left, kneeling, is King Richard II along with John the Baptist holding a lamb, St. Edward the Confessor holding the ring he presented to John the Evangelist, and St. Edmund who is holding the arrow that killed him in 869. Richard himself is wearing his own badge along with a collar of broom cod, which is the pot of the broom plant and was used on the crest of several French kings. On the right panel we see the Christ child held by Mary along with the host of 11 angels. One of the angels is holding a banner with the flag of the Red Cross of St. George, which many associate with the resurrection of Christ. Each angel is also wearing a white stag emblem, which was the badge of Richard II. They are also wearing broomcod collars. From these details we can gather, at the very least, the earliest year of the painting. The coat of arms with the impaled invented coat of arms of Edward the Confessor over his own was a style that Richard began employing in 1395. His first wife, Anne of Bohemia, died in 1394. The rosemary on the field under the stag, as well as the rosemary all over Richard's coat, are thought to be remembrances of Anne. Richard was remarried in 1396 to Isabella of Valois, the daughter of the French king Charles IV. Incidentally, the broomcod was the emblem of Charles IV. When it came to nobility and royalty, marriages were often seen as strategic alliances between families and kingdoms. When entering an alliance, it was often customary for each side to wear a symbol of the other, and this was no exception. This puts the date of this painting at no earlier than 1396, as the marriage was probably part of the terms of the truce at Ardress, which secured a 28-year peace between England and France. Finally, this can be dated no later than 1399, as that was the year Richard II lost his crown. When we look at the whole piece, it's not unreasonable to assume that this was commissioned on behalf of, or maybe even directly by, Richard II. This is because the color blue, at least in this time period, was very rare and expensive. It was most often used very sparingly and almost exclusively on divine figures, but here it covers over half the right panel. Richard's garb is painted in vermilion, which was also an expensive pigment at the time. This work, which measures 22.4 inches by 11.7 inches, although small, would have been a very expensive piece just based on those pigments. Throughout history, monarchic rulers believed that they were among those selected by their god or gods to rule their domains. In Europe, this principle was known as the divine right of kings. This leaves little wonder to why Richard II is shown with venerated saints, receiving blessings directly from Christ. Such was par for the course in the lives of European kings. Where we see some really interesting things, though, is in the right panel with Christ, Mary, and the angels. The halo around Christ's head is done in a pointillist manner. The pattern inside the halo is the crown of thorns and the nails of the crucifix. If the halo itself didn't provide the clue as to the identity of this child, that small detail certainly did. The angels also catch the eye especially those behind and to Mary's left, as well as the two on her right not looking at the king and saints. Medieval paintings such as this often showed expressionless faces, but the four standing angels behind and to Mary's left all have expressions ranging from apathy to disapproval. The angel immediately behind Mary has the strongest expression of those four. As for the angels on Mary's right who are looking at her, the one not holding the flag has a strong look of consternation on her face and is holding her right hand out to emphasize that point. Two other angels are also not paying attention. One is directing the other on which way to look, as one would direct a child who is not participating properly in an activity. Here's where one's personal insight may be required. Richard II's rule was marked by crisis after crisis, and the consensus is that he was, by and large, ineffective in dealing with many of them. My personal take on this is that these angels were made this way by the artists to highlight the problems with Richard's reign. 
It's almost as if these angels disapprove of the Christ child bestowing the blessings on this particular king. One more interesting detail can be found on the far right, and that is the disembodied hand. Logic tells us that it should belong to the angel on the far right, but it doesn't really appear connected to anything. Having the artist alive to ask is sometimes really helpful, but unfortunately we may be left forever wondering about this detail. As much as I tried, I could find no discussion on the angels individually or of the disembodied hand. All the other discussions I read were fixed on the concrete details such as the stag, broom cod, rosemary, etc. I find this a bit curious. Having come across this painting very recently, I was initially struck by the amount of blue used. I knew right then I wanted to do a bit of a deep dive into this one. There may be more to discover with this work, but what was discussed today serves to highlight the importance of art history. A work of art reflects the society within which a piece is created. Studying the art helps uncover information about the history beyond simple facts like Richard II marries the daughter of Charles IV. This serves to build a more complete understanding of history as a whole. So what do you think? What insights do you have about this piece of art? Do you agree or disagree with my assessments? Let me know in the comments below and let's talk about art. If I don't answer right away, it simply means I've jumped down another rabbit hole. Also, if I have earned it, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. It helps get the word out to others who may be curious about this topic. Thank you for watching. We'll meet again soon.